First tonight, the notorious killer of the Leicestershire schoolgirls, Dawn Ashworth and Linda Mann, will be released from jail. Colin Pitchfork's parole was put on hold after the government ordered a review. But today, a judge ruled that Pitchfork can now be released without posing a risk to the public. Our social affairs correspondent Jeremy Ball reports. The murder and rape of Dawn Ashworth and Linda Mann made headlines around the world. But now, after 33 years in jail, Pitchfork's release has been confirmed after an independent judge rejected an argument that his parole was irrational. Her children should have played in this garden. For Dawn's family, it's the news they've been dreading. Well, I'm appalled by today's decision. I'm concerned about what it says, what messages it sends out, and what assessment it makes of the worth of the lives of uh, my niece and his other victims. It robbed Dawn of her life, and in a way that's just too awful to imagine, really. It was a crime that was notorious, the world's first murder case to be solved through DNA fingerprinting. The girls were from Narborough and Enderby, where it's a crime that's still raw. I really do think it's the wrong thing to do to let him out. And he terrorised these villagers. The girls couldn't go out, you know, they were frightened. Absolutely a monster. I don't care whether he's reformed. He, he should never come out. He took two innocent girls' lives. So, no, I don't think he should be released. He had his child in the car while he murdered those girls. I mean, that's terrible. I feel so sorry for the families and uh, it's just not right. In a statement today, the parole board said it has immense sympathy for the families of Pitchfork's victims, but that it's bound by law to assess whether a prisoner's safe to release. It says that decision has to be solely focused on what risk a prisoner may pose on release and whether that risk can be managed in the community. And it says Pitchfork's release was supported by the Secretary of State's own witnesses. It's a decision I feared. It's saying to sex offenders, child rapists, that they're uh, at some point in time are going to be able to resume their lives. Of course, what Colin Pitchfork did all those years ago is horrific, but he's been assessed now as being safe. And the parole board says he served his sentence, and so they don't have any legal alternative but to release him. Well, I don't accept that. It's far from an exact science. It is an assessment. They're taking a risk with the lives of the children of the families in the location where he's going to be relocated, in my view, and it's nothing more than an experiment. Pitchfork's now in his 60s. He's going to be banned from Leicestershire and monitored closely, but today's decision means he's likely to be free within weeks. Well, Jeremy's here in the studio. Jeremy, you can really hear the emotion there. Why isn't Pitchfork being kept in jail? Bottom line, Emily, the parole board simply had to put that emotion to one side because while these crimes were so shocking, while Pitchfork was so notorious, as we said in that report, he has served his minimum jail term now, so that simply wasn't relevant. All they had to consider was the risk he poses to the public now. They did that by considering a mass of evidence about the progress he's made in jail. That included talking to Colin Pitchfork himself. Now, we've had reaction today from the Ministry of Justice who are disappointed uh, this decision has been upheld. They say they will respect it, though. Reaction, too, from the local Leicestershire MP Alberto Costa, who's campaigned really hard on this this issue. As you'd expect, he's disappointed too. He says, though, if these crimes had happened today, the outcome would be very different. If Colin Pitchfork had committed just one of his crimes today, uh, he would likely have received a whole life tariff, which would have resulted in him spending probably the whole of his natural life in prison. But that doesn't, in my opinion, excuse the parole board from making a decision, which I think people are right to feel angry at, that here it is that a man who's only 61, fit, healthy, is being released from prison having committed these horrific crimes, and yet the family and friends of the victims, well, they frankly have a life sentence to serve. 
So, Jeremy, how will the public be protected from him? Well, the parole board has recommended some very strict licence conditions for Colin Pitchfork on where he lives, on who he contacts, on the technology he can use. He's banned from any unsupervised contact with children. He's banned from Leicestershire. He'll be tagged as well. And he'll also, I think this is really interesting, he'll also be subject to lie detector tests. And if he breaches any one of those licence conditions, well, the bottom line is he could be sent straight back to jail.